some people claim that she died because she drank his ashes but we actually don't know why and how she died hi guys and welcome back on my channel and yes again it took me a very long time to make a new video but as i said before there are things that are more important i love doing this but i don't really have the time sometimes i can make a video once a week and another time it takes me a few months and especially this one was very hard because i couldn't really find a lot of information about it but i have to say the information that i found was very interesting so let's dive into it and today I'm going to finish my series called The Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. So if you followed my series, you know there's only one left. And that is the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. As always, I try to make this video as truthful as possible. But I'm only making these videos for fun. So if it's not correct, you can always put a comment in the comment section. Because I really want to know the true facts. But I really did my best to find the most truthful information. So let's start. The mausoleum at Halicarnassus was also known as the tomb of Mausolus and it was a tomb built between 353 and 350 BC at Halicarnassus which is now modern-day Bodrum in Turkey. It was built for Mausolus, the ruler of Caria from 377 and 353 BC. Mausolus was the second ruler of Caria from the Hectomenid dynasty. He was the eldest son of Hectomenus, a native Carian who became the satrap of Caria around 395 BC, serving under King Artaxerxes II of Persia. I guess you don't know what a satrap is, I didn't know either so I looked it up. But a satrap was the governor of the ancient Median and Archimenid empires. And the satrap was also a viceroy to the king and we would call it a vice president nowadays. Eventually, Hectominus established a hereditary dynasty because he ruled with considerable autonomy. That also made him a king or a dynast. Hectominus had five children who all succeeded him and as many powerful families in ancient times, they engaged in sibling marriages so that they could preserve royal power within the family. Their dynasty ended with the conquest of Alexander the Great, but Ada, one of the daughters, adopted Alexander the Great as her son. So Ada would rule Caria under the Macedonian Empire of Alexander the Great from 334 to 326 BC. Another sister called Artemisia II of Caria married her brother Mausolus. He was the eldest son. Mausolus conquered a great part of Lydia around 360 BC and that ended the line of dynasts who ruled Lydia. He joined the revolt of the satraps of Antolia in 362 BCE against the Persian king Artaxerxes II. But he abandoned the struggle just in time to keep from going down in defeat with his allies. He also fought alongside Artaxerxes in the same revolt. And I think that might have saved him. He invaded several Greek islands and he invaded Yonia. He worked together with the Rhodians who were from the island Rhodes in a social war against Athens. The ancient seat of the Carian kings was in the city Misala, but Mausolus moved the capital to Halicarnassus around 370 BC. Halicarnassus was already a big city, its history dated back to the Bronze Age, and it was also the birthplace of Herodotus, who was a very famous historian from the 5th century BC. And even though the city was already big and important, Mausolus made it even grander. He added many fine buildings like a harbor, a palace, and several temples. He also made sure that all the coastal cities got an upgrade. And this helped because the Mediterranean trade went very well during that time, especially with the Greek island Rhodes. And Rhodes was an important island because it had a very strategic position. He also made the road network better to connect inland sites further. The prosperity of the region improved and tax revenues came flooding into the capital. And this wealth contributed to the building of one of the most impressive wonders of the ancient world, the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. Many people say that the idea of the mausoleum came from his wife and sister Artemisia, but it was Mausolus himself who wanted to have a great tomb for himself and for his descendants. He started planning the tomb before he died, but it's most likely that he couldn't see the start of the building process. 
However, some people claim that he was alive to see one year of the construction. Unfortunately, Mazalus died around 553 BCE. His sister Artemisia would succeed him, but only for a little while. Artemisia wasn't really a figure I ever heard about, but it's actually a very funny story. Because according to legends, she was heartbroken when Mazalus died. There are even stories that she mixed his ashes in her daily drink and that she pined away during the two years that she survived him. Some people claim that she died because she drank his ashes, but we actually don't know why and how she died. Artemisia had ambition. She commanded the fleet and played a role in the military and political affairs of the Aegean after the decline of the Athenian naval superiority. But not everybody was happy that a woman ruled Caria, especially the Rhodians. So the Rhodians sent a fleet against Artemisia, but there was one thing that they didn't know, and that was that their deceased husband had made a secret harbor. So Artemisia invited the Rhodians into the harbor. The Rhodians began exciting their ships, but they didn't know that Artemisia sailed her fleet through an outlet in the sea to enter the main harbor. She captured the empty Rhodian ships, and her men killed the Rhodians in the marketplace. She put her own men in the Rhodian ships and had them sail back to Rhodes. And the Rhodians had no idea, so they welcomed them back into their own harbor. And this made it very easy for Artemisia's men to take over Rhodes. Artemisia erected a monument in Rhodes to celebrate her conquest of Rhodes. But of course the Rhodians made sure it would be gone when they were liberated. So Artemisia was a very smart woman, but that didn't change the fact that she really missed her brother and husband. And according to many stories and legends, it was one of the purest and rarest kind of love. And yeah, it was her brother, but it makes the story more romantic, so just forget that it's her brother. And because she loved her brother so much, she wanted to spare no expense in building the tomb. She sent messages to Greece to find the most talented artist of that time. These include Scopas, he was the man who had supervised the rebuilding of the Temple of Artemis. And she also hired famous sculptor Leogares, Briaxis, Scopas and Timotheus next to hundreds of craftsmen. According to the 1st century BC Roman architect Victuvius, the mausoleum was supervised by the architects Pintheus of Preen and sculptor Satyrus. The tomb was erected on a hill like many other important buildings, so that the people could see how important and grand it was and that it could overlook the city. First they built a stone platform and they enclosed it with a courtyard. The top of the platform was reached by a flight of stairs flanked by stone lions. On the outer walls of the courtyard were statues of various gods and goddesses and at the corner stone warriors were stationed. At the center of the platform was the mausoleum itself. It was located within a large precinct right in the city center and connected to the agora by a large monumental staircase. The Agora was a place where people would come together to listen to public announcements and later it was used as a marketplace. The structure was an elected mix of Greek, Near Eastern and Egyptian architectural features, just like Caria itself. The building was constructed of bricks, but they covered it with Proconetian marble to give it a splendid look. One third of the mausoleum was a square tapering block covered with relief sculptures. The relics included standard images from Greek mythology, including the battle between the Lepids and Centaurs, the battle between the Greeks and the Amazons and chariot racers. Another one-third of the mausoleum consisted of a set of 36 ionic columns. Between each column was a statue and a solid block was constructed behind the columns to bear the weight of the structure's roof. The sculptures were painted in bright colors. The roof covered the other one-third of the mausoleum. It was a step pyramid with 24 levels. On top of it was a sculpture of Mazalus and his wife Artemisia riding a four-horse chariot made by Pythias himself. It was probably completed in 350 BCE, but Artemisia would never see it completed. She died one year before it was done. She would be interred along with her husband and subsequent generations of their family. The tomb was also filled with royal treasure and was closed off to avoid intruders and royal treasure hunters. The mausoleum was 148 feet high, 45 meters, which made it one of the tallest structures in existence at that time. And the mausoleum was so impressive that the word mausoleum became a general word 
for Grand Tomb. And it was of course added to the list of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The mausoleum overlooked Halicarnassus for many centuries and even when Alexander the Great ruled the city it was still there. It also survived pirate attacks in 62 and 48 BCE. It would remain there for 16 centuries. But then a series of earthquakes shattered the columns and the bronze chariot crashed into the ground. By 1404, only the base of the structure was still recognizable. In the beginning of the 15th century, the Knights of St. John of Malta invaded the region and built a massive castle. They wanted to fortify the castle, so they used the remaining stones of the mausoleum. And my heart really breaks when I tell this because, well, maybe if they didn't use it, they would rebuild the mausoleum and we could have seen it today. And uh, yeah, well, of course, we also break up stuff that we build nowadays and maybe in the future they would also have liked to seen it but anyway it's done we can change it and then Halicarnassus wasn't really known as Halicarnassus anymore it was known as Bodrum the city in Turkey that we also know nowadays there were rumors that the Turks wanted to invade the city so they broke up the remaining portions of the tomb to use for the castle walls they also used many of the sculptures to make lime for plaster but some of the sculptures were salvaged and mounted into the castle for three centuries. As I said before, you can still see the castle in Bodrum, but all the remaining sculptures are now in the British Museum. Even before the knights came, grave robbers already dug a tunnel under the grave chamber to steal the treasures inside the tomb. Of course, the knights claimed that Muslim villagers were responsible, but it's more likely that some crusaders plundered the graves. If you watch documentary channels or maybe National Geographic, you can see that the Knights also plundered a lot of graves. So I think it was them and not the Muslims. For many years, the location of the mausoleum was lost and it was only rediscovered in the 19th century by Charles Thomas Newton, who worked for the British Museum. He managed to locate some walls, a staircase and three of the corners of the foundation. He even found sections of the relics that decorated the walls of the building, portions of the stepped roof, a broken chariot wheel from the sculpture, and he even found the two statues that represented Mausolus and Artemisia. You can see them on display in the British Museum, but the Turkish authorities really want them back, and I can understand that because they came from their country, so I really hope they get them back. There are plans to rebuild the mausoleum, which is very exciting. In 2017, it was announced that the Danish Halicarnassus project will revive it. But we have to wait and see because stories like that are often eventually not true. They also said they wanted to rebuild the Colossus of Rhodes and the Temple of Artemis and the Lighthouse of Alexandria. And of course, I hope they do, but I won't wait for it because most of the time they don't do it. So yay, another wonder did exist. I'm very happy to announce that. I wasn't really interested in this subject. I didn't really know a lot about it. I know when I searched on YouTube for videos about it, it was always like three minutes long, so it didn't give a lot of information. But once I found more information, it was more interesting. And I hope you guys also find it interesting. I hope you guys liked this video. It really took me a lot of hours. I think the most hours of any video I ever did. And this is the last video of the wonders of the ancient world. If you like this subject, give me a thumbs up and I might cover the wonders that we have right now. And let me know in the comments which of the wonder of the ancient world is your favorite. For me, it's absolutely the Great Pyramid of Giza. I really want to visit it one day. I might go next year, but it depends if it's safe enough to travel to Egypt. And well, anyway, once in my life, I will go for sure. And let me know if you have a new subject for a new video because now I've completed this series so I have enough time to cover other things, aliens, mysteries, missing person, um, as long as it's something mysterious and of course as long as it's fun. Thank you so much for watching and I see you next time. Bye!